We've known for a long time there are certain driver mutations, which are the early molecular mutations that happen in the myeloproliferative neoplasms. And we know that the percentage of um, patients with any given driver mutation is different um, in the various diseases, polycythemia vera, essential thrombocythemia, and myelofibrosis. So one of the early questions ever since the JAK2 mutation was described is why do some people act this way and others act that way? And the, what we've learned is that one of the things that describes people's later risk is whether or not they carry this thing called the JAK2 mu mutation. So especially in essential thrombocythemia now, we are changing our treatment based on whether or not people have this mutation or not. And so that's really what describes the entrance to the genomic uh, era. And decision making on patients is different than it was even three years ago, two years ago, based on this mostly retrospective information, but still important information that patients with ET may, may not need to take strong cytoreductive therapies if, for example, they don't carry the JAK2 mutation, even no matter what age they are. And that's an important change in our treatment paradigm, and it might save patients from uh, needing to be on therapy that they otherwise wouldn't need to be on.